I've managed to grab one of Blur's lead designers, Gareth, to ask him a few questions about the game. Hello. Uh, right. Hi. Now, the multiplayer beta for Blur's been online and accessible since mid-March, but for those who haven't experienced the gameplay and are new to racing games, what makes Blur different from other driving games on the market? It's all about action, it's all about having fun, and it's all about overtaking. So in Blur multiplayer, there's 20 cars on track at once. First time this console generation, 20 players playing at once. Um, loads of power-ups that you can use to take out people in front of you and behind you. Just results in loads of overtaking, loads of battling, and just loads of chaos. The power-ups yes. are really fun and sort of give you the upper hand over your opponents. Can you just sure. talk us through what they do and, and how best to use them? When we were coming up with the design for Blur, we really wanted to encourage battling and overtaking. So all the power-ups um, are there to basically make people speed up, slow down, overtake and, and do that sort of stuff. So there's a, a nitro boost that gives you an extra boost of speed. Um, there's a shunt, which is kind of like a homing missile. Um, there's bolt, which is like a, a straight uh, shot, but you get three of those. Um, there's a mine um, and there's a barge, which is a close combat that attack so each one of the power-ups works in a, a different way depending on which situation you are in the game. So instead of being just a straight racing game you've got these extra power-ups to sort of hinder your opponents if they're beating you. Yeah well what we wanted to do was uh, make a racing game for people who like action games so by adding the power-ups and the weapons into the game it's um, kind of 50% to do with your driving skill and 50% to do with how good you are with the weapons. So what we're hoping is that people that have maybe tried more of the traditional racing games, mm. found them a bit boring, found that they weren't that good at them, then they can pick up Blur and they can you know, play it and after five minutes they can feel like they're really enjoying the game. I found this really easy to pick up and those extra power-ups made me feel much better at the game because I could <laughs> knock someone else out awesome. in front of me oh. or, or shunt them out of the way. That's great. And it was really good fun. Now with Blur, what made you sort of move away from the simulator type games as with um, Project Gotham Racing sure. and go towards the arcade style? Sure. Well, I think when a, when a new console comes out, the first thing you want to do is make a super realistic simulation game with your new gadget that you've just got into the office. So it's very natural for us to go and make it that sort of game. But you know, we've had the Xbox for five years now. We've made a, a couple of simulation games with Gotham um, on the Xbox 360. So we felt, you know, now's the time for a game which is all about gameplay, all about fun, all about beating up other people and, and, and less about the simulation and the realism. So that was really what drove us to make work. Now, with the multiplayer, you've added some extra elements. You can associate it with social networking as well, with Twitter. How does that work? Okay, so the, the reason why we wanted the uh, social network integration was to allow people who are on different consoles to uh, communicate with each other and challenge each other. Okay. So you could say, like, you know, hey, I've just completed the game on Medium, and then you send it to anyone who's following you on Twitter. They see it, and then they can go... Right. Well, uh, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna complete it on hard yeah. and then send a tweet back. And what's cool is these these tweets can't be sort of replicated in the game. So if you know if it's come from Blur, then that person's definitely done that part of the game. Now you've introduced split screen in the gaming. What was your your motivation behind that? As games have got more complicated and, and more detailed visually, it's quite tough to do a split screen game because effectively you, you've got to render the world four times. Yeah. Um, so quite a lot of companies have, have, have really not done that and because of Xbox Live and things people don't think it's that important mm. but for me personally the best experiences of playing a game is when you get your mates around and you all sit on the sofa and you play it together yeah. in the same room. It's really good, really you can well. keep an eye on how well your mate's doing yeah. and you'll be like, oh no, come on, get out of the way. Yeah, you, you, play, you play the game very differently, you can see where people are on the track and stuff and you know, sort of nudging each other and trying to make a, take the controller off and stuff like that. But the most important thing is the cars, you've yes. chosen really realistic cars in the game, how sure. many different cars can players choose from? There are 60 different cars in the game. Each one of those is uh, a real world car and we felt that if we put fake cars into it, it would have felt like a bit of a toy. Whereas with the real cars in, then people can be assured that it's got you know the, the, the bizarre creations handling yeah. and it's got that real racing experience just with all the good bits uh, to do with arcade races as well. Mm -hmm. We went for mean looking cars, so we went for like big American V8s yeah. and muscle cars. And I like the truck. Car. Yeah, and the big <laughs> truck and, and, and the Koenigsegg and these, these big gruff cars. They're a bit meaty. Yes. You, you don't mind like bashing someone out Yeah, the way. That, that's it, you know, but if you know, you know, a Ferrari wouldn't be right in, the, in, the, in our game, whereas something like the Koenigsegg, which is big and gruff, just suits the game really well. 